Today, I'm going to tell you the story of the first CD that I ever bought. You know, it was a long time ago, back in 1995. My family was living in a country called Malawi, which is southeastern Africa. So I was 12 going on to 13, and this was 1995, around Christmas time. My family took a trip to go to Cape Town in South Africa. We also visited Joburg, um, but Cape Town was where I bought my first CD. And uh, I have very fond memories of, of going to Cape Town. You know, um, this was 1995, a year after I believe Nelson Mandela became president. So there was all this great, awesome vibes in the air. The South African flag was everywhere. People were, it was a really cool vibe that people were, were giving off. And uh, it was really cool to go there because South Africa um, is, is very, is way more developed than a lot of the countries there. I mean, in particular, Malawi, which is a small country and there's not too much going on. I mean, you know, aside from like maybe two or three restaurants and the grocery store in the capital city, that's it. Everything closed at six. There were no malls. There's no McDonald's, nothing. So South Africa had McDonald's, had malls. It was, they had big modern cities. Cape Town was like cities with like buildings and like uh, really nice roads and malls and restaurants and um, arcades and all that stuff. So when I, you know, I was really excited to go there and also because I was going to go buy my, my first CD. So uh, we were at this mall by the ocean front, by the, um, by the port, by the seaport. And, uh, I remember walking into this big CD stores, you know, that they used to have in the nineties. So in the middle of big row of CDs, you could stand on either side and on the, on the walls too. If you turn around, you could like, you know, you had CDs there as well. And, um, this is the nineties, uh, mid nineties. So rock was the biggest music around still at that time. And I was standing by in front of a bunch of CDs and I had no idea what to get because I, my, my, my knowledge of music was very, very limited. You know, anything that I knew was about my friends, uh, came from my friends who gave me tapes or CDs that they let me borrow. Or sometimes I get my hands on like a magazine, a music magazine, and I would like find out about a few bands here and there. But for the most part, you know, I didn't have MTV or anything at home because we didn't have that at home in Malawi at that time. So I was just standing there, just like looking at picking up different CDs, looking at their covers, seeing what looked cool and just like putting them back. And I really was, you know, didn't know what to get. Um, I want, but I also knew that I wanted to get something I didn't already have. Like, you know, I didn't want to get Metallica. I didn't want to get Megadeth. I didn't want to get um, uh, Guns N' Roses or Pantera. You know, I had those tapes. I wanted to get something new so I can like, you know, bring it back to my friends. Be like, well, look what I got, you know, but also something that I wanted to like. So uh, I was standing in front and I was picking up this record. And, I, and one of the records that stood out was um, ACDC's Ball Breaker. It came out that year. And uh, I remember just thinking Angus Young, you know, on the cover with like the electricity around him. I thought he looked really cool. And I was like, this looks cool. I think I might get this. But I was putting it down and I was like looking at other stuff. And after about 45 minutes, I was, you know, there was a guy next to me and he was like older, you know, he was maybe like in his like late teens. He had long hair. He was wearing like, you know, black. He was like a metalhead. And then he stands next to me and then he picks up this random CD. He hands it to me and he goes, this is good. He goes, this is good. He like points to it. He's like, good, good. And then I'm like, oh, oh wow. Oh, thank you. Um, okay. Okay, cool. So I was like, well, this guy says it's good. So cool. The album he handed to me was Iron Maiden, The X Factor. They had just released this one of October of 1995, and we were there in December. And I believe Iron Maiden's first tour on their world tour during that time was South Africa. I might be wrong on that, but it was definitely, they had just played South Africa, I believe. Anyway, so this guy, he hands me this, and I'm looking at this. And I'm a 13 year old boy and I'm like, holy crap, like, look at this that, you know, Eddie looks like he's getting tortured and yeah, they're just being disemboweled and dismembered. I'm like, this has got to be heavy as hell. You know what I mean? Like I would remember watching um, Ace Ventura. We had that on VHS or we, we rented it from the store. And I remember that band that was playing. I didn't know who they were, but I knew that it was death metal. I found out later it's Cannibal Corpse playing, but I, I was like intrigued by that, like heavy, like death metal stuff. And then I was like, 
when I saw this album cover, I was like, this is probably like similar to that. I mean, you know, if, 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 if a death metal band had a cover, this is probably something, this is probably it. This, they would probably have something like this. So I'm like, all right, cool. Well, this metalhead dude, he like recommended this CD for me. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm I guess I'm going to go and, um, I'm going to take it to my dad. Cause you know, I, I didn't have any money and, uh, I was there with my dad. My dad too was browsing and selecting some, some CDs. So I took it to my dad and I half expecting him to take one look at this and be like, no, no, put it back. You know, <laughs> I'm not getting you this. Well, what is this? You know? Because, like, I mean, look at this. But anyway, so I gave it to my dad. My dad just, like, oh, put it in his pile. Went up there and uh, bought him. Then we went back to wherever we were staying, the hotel, later on that night. And then I put this on the my Discman. It had a Sony Discman. And uh, let's just say that I was very let down because I was expecting death metal. And you know, I was listening to stuff like Pantera, White Zombie, um, you know, uh, Metallica, early Metallica, and I wanted something like I wanted the next level. And I was like, you know what, this with this album cover, I think I can get to that heavy next level. Um, no, no, it, it was not. It was not. And um, you know, <laughs> I was pretty disappointed because I was like, ah. Okay, it's it's not what I expected, and um, you know how it was back in the day when you got a CD. You were you, you you commit to that, and you have to listen to it, and you might not like it, but God damn it, it's your CD, and you're gonna listen to it until you love it. So I, I listened to this a lot more, and um, it grew on me a little bit, right? And uh, there are some bangers on this uh, CD even back then. Like I would, I really liked uh, "Look for the Truth," "The Aftermath." Those songs I remember really liking, you know, it was definitely heavy rock and uh, obviously heavy metal, right? But it was not um, death metal that what I was expecting, you know, 13 year old kid just getting, you know, into like metal and, and uh, it, it, it was a letdown. But as the years went by, I would keep listening to this. And today, uh, I really like this album. So this album is funny, too, because among Iron Maiden fans... They consider this one, you know, not to be Iron Maiden's best. And at the time, it was one. Of, it was hated. This album was hated by their fans because uh, it featured a new vocalist, Blaze Bailey. You know, Bruce Dickinson. He uh, he left. You know, to do like some um, his solo stuff, and they brought in uh, Blaze Bailey. So. Uh, who I always thought did a great job. Like I, his vocal performance is not something i have a problem with i thought he was great and I, l listening now to this album i think it's a it's a fantastic album it's a great it's a very thoughtful and very emotional it's a very i guess an emotional album and from what i read steve harris the bassist who wrote most of these songs he was going through a divorce and not to mention bruce left and now they're trying to like you know get back at it so this album, in many ways, um, it was kind of dark in many ways and also a little bit somber and, you know, it has a different vibe. So long story short, I, I really like this album now. And um, I think Blaze did a great job. He, you know, he, I think he didn't get the credit he deserved. Um, you know, but it's really tough, though. I mean, we're trying to follow Bruce Dickinson and stuff like that. I mean, if you're a long-term Maiden fan, I, I could understand why you wouldn't like this especially at the time when it came out however now i think looking back a lot of fans are re-listening to this album and they are uh, realizing that um they actually like it now it's it's definitely has its uh its standout its standouts and um yeah it stands alone and it's different on its own it's you know sign of the cross uh, like i said look for the truth the aftermath uh, Law in the World's Hands, Edge of Darkness. These are good songs. 2 AM. These are good songs. So this is my first album that I ever got. Which one was yours? Put it in the comments. Let me know. So I mentioned ACDC. Ball Breaker was one of the albums that I could have gotten that day. I think I would have gotten it if that kid next to me didn't hand me 
the X factor. So um, about six months later, so my sisters were went off to college and uh, they sent me, they would send me CDs. And one of them that they sent me about six months later, something like that was Ball Breaker. This is, this is the exact copy that they sent me. So I saw this and I was like, oh, this is the CD that I was looking at when I was at the CD store and they just like picked one randomly and this was this. So this album, I loved, and this actually started my obsession with ACDC. Uh, it was actually two albums, Ball Breaker and High Voltage. I got them at the same time. So um, there you go. There's my first CD story, Iron Maiden, The X Factor, an album that I did not like at first, but now I, uh, I really think it's a, a great album. And everything from the songs to Blaze Bailey, I think it's great, not to mention this is a one gnarly ass cover. So uh, that's it guys. Hope you guys are doing well. Drop me a comment. Let me know where you're watching from. I love hearing from all of you guys. Thank you so much to everybody who has written comments and letting me know where you guys are coming from. Um, it means a lot to me. So uh, thank you very much once again. Drop me a line and uh, I will see you guys in the next video. Take it easy. Take care. Peace.